Hello, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast, where we talk about all things electric vehicles, including what it's like to make the decision to buy or lease an EV and drive it every day. Today, we are joined by friend of Out of Spec, Lacey, who decided to lease a Nissan Aria. So let's figure out why and how it's been going. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Lacey, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. Hey, Francie. It's so nice to be here. Um, yeah, first, I guess... Um, reach into the out of spec audience was on the YouTube channel, but now I'm happy to be here on the podcast. Right. You and Kyle did a, uh, a whole video about on um, out of spec reviews, kind of about the same thing. And you got to even drive the Aria and explain a little bit about your reasoning. So we're going to get into even more details of this today because in automakers are throwing out and dealerships are throwing out really competitive lease deals for electric vehicles right now. And the more and more awesome that they are, the more and more it makes sense, especially if you don't, if you're not, if it's your first step into the owning an EV or driving an EV space, yeah, why not lease it? But also it could just be um, better value for your dollar. And we don't know exactly how the resale value will be for EVs. We know that typically once you buy it, it does depreciate like most cars, uh, but EVs, you know, quickly, more quickly than others. It's still a little bit to be shown, but also leasing these competitive offers, it makes sense. So obviously we'll get into why you decided to lease over buy an EV and why you chose the Nissan Aria of all the options out there. But first, maybe let's talk about where you were before you made this decision. So what were you thinking about electric vehicles? What were you driving before? Why were you like, okay, I'm ready to, to maybe lease or buy one? Right. So the first car I ever owned myself was the Acura TSX 2005. Um, I got that while I was in high school. I uh, had it for about six years and it was just not my favorite once I learned about EVs. Um, so I started working in the EV industry around like 2021, I think. And uh, once I learned about the technology and um, its benefits on the environment i was like oh my gosh when i'm driving a gas car i don't i don't know if i want to be in this anymore <laughs> um and then over time like more and more things just kept breaking down i'd get stuff fixed um i'd take it to the mechanic sometimes it wouldn't get completely fixed right away so then i'd have to take it back that would happen a few times so i'd lose trust with mechanics and i don't know anything about cars either so um, a lot of room for manipulation um, so with EVs, there's just so many benefits that come to owning one. Um, and so it took me a while to finally, I guess, build up my bank in order to afford one. Um, but then when I got this one, I realized I didn't really need to wait that long. But what really triggered me to get one um, was starting this new job at Drive Queen Colorado because they have a really cool uh, $400 a month incentive to own an EV. Um, so that $400 a month covers like almost the entire monthly payment on the lease and the insurance. So I don't really have to like have a car payment right now. So uh, I think that's what really like triggered me to get it now, but I've been wanting one for a few years. So yeah. Wow. That is an amazing uh, value add from your company because we talk about like having workplace charging, but actually you know, subsidizing the ownership or the leasing of an electric vehicle for your employees, that's really huge. And of course, they're, you know, talking the talk and walking the walk in that sense. And I'd love to talk about uh, Drive Clean Colorado a little bit more, but we'll we'll get into that in a second. So you were you were ready, you were educated, knowledgeable about electric vehicles, decided it aligned not only with your values, but also that there are good deals out there, you know, it can be a car that works for your lifestyle. So you were driving the the Acura from mm -hmm. TSX or TSX from 2005. And then also you had the model three, the out of spec uh, <laughs> company, Kyle's model three for a little bit too. And you decided to 
not go with the Tesla, but what did you think of the Model 3 while you were driving it around? I I loved it. It was just so nice. Like the whole driving experience is just flawless. Um, especially like the regenerative braking. I'm so big on regen. And if you saw the YouTube video, you would see that. So um, it was just so nice. I had it for two months and it was really funny how that worked out. Um, I think I just asked Kyle if I could like borrow the car for an event. And he was like, yeah, that's fine. We'll just ask for it back whenever we need it again. But he didn't need it back for like two months. So I got to drive it for that long. And it was a really great like, um, I guess, test for like, if I can really drive an EV, if that works for my lifestyle. And it worked out so well, like, especially with Tesla's having access to the Tesla charging network, the supercharging network. Um, it was just so easy to get from place to place and charge for like 20 minutes if I needed to. Um, but I, I loved, um, how he let me borrow the, uh, the Tesla for that long and um, yeah, yeah, I think that, that really made me know, like, I'm definitely going EV from here on out. Interesting. So you liked the regenerative braking. Why do you, why do you like that so much? What do you like about regen? Um, it just makes driving so much simpler. Um, I think also comparing it to my old car, I hated the braking on that. Um, it was really stiff on, on the Acura. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not going to lie, would have like bad dreams about me just like running past red lights because I had to press so hard in order to brake. Oh my God. Um, so for the Tesla, it's just one pedal driving and it is so smooth. And so if people are also borrowing the car and they're a little like lead footed, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's still a nice driving experience. Uh, it just does it so smoothly. Interesting. Okay. So maybe after that, you were kind of looking for certain aspects but you decided not that you were from the beginning did you know were you open to all options or were you like okay maybe not tesla maybe not this maybe not that were you considering it all or did you already kind of have it zoned in for when you started looking yeah so i was pretty open to everything from the start um kyle was really pushing me to get a tesla but i didn't know if i kind of wanted that reputation that comes with the tesla as well <laughs> Um, I kind of wanted um, just a basic car. It doesn't stand out. It's like not easily identified as like anything special. It's just kind of there. So um, at first uh, I was looking at the Kia Nero and I only liked that one because it was like the first one that I had gone on a long trip in. Um, mm -hmm. I think I went somewhere in the mountains um, with that one. And I really like the size of it. Uh, I like the display and just how it all worked out. Um, and then I just kept kind of jumping from model to model, like, oh, actually, now I like this one. And, oh, now I like the Aria. Now I like the um, whatever else, like, Hyundai has. Um, and I just kept bouncing around to all these different models. But um, the regen was a big consideration for me. But I still ended up not getting a car that had full regen just because of how great the deals were on it. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so let's talk about the the specs. So you have the the uh, Nissan Aria Engage mm -hmm. Plus E Force All Wheel Drive. So this is kind of the standard options with the bigger battery. That's about eighty seven kilowatt hours usable lithium ion battery. It has a range of around. I mean, on the internet at least it said up to two hundred and seventy two miles. But I would love to hear about your experience with that. It has, I think, decent. Uh, DC fast charging speeds like up to around 160 kilowatts maybe and you can correct me on any of this but it did seem especially if you know I was watching the out of spec reviews video as well but pretty good safety features and also other uh, aspects like the ambient lighting heated seats uh, it, lane centers and all this stuff so it does seem like a pretty you know nicely a nicely optioned option that you got and so I know that you said you know you took it even though it didn't have that region and sometimes you know you're just put in a car or you're given a deal and you're like oh, i just really can't turn this down so when you were dealing with the dealership how did that go once you i guess were, were you at a nissan dealership yeah actually i was really close to going to get a kona maybe not officially getting one but like really test driving one and like officially considering it walking through the financials um, but we actually learned of a really great deal that the Nissan dealership in Aurora had on the, on the Aria. 
I can't remember the exact numbers. I think it might have been like 199 a month for a lease. That's before like taxes and fees. But I was like, that's kind of a pretty good deal. So let me look into the ARIA. Let me look at the dealership here in Fort Collins, see if they can have like similar deals. Um, So I called them and they actually offered to bring it to my place um, to test drive because I actually couldn't drive my car at the time. The tire was flat. So they drove it all the way over here and that was my first time being in one, like really seeing one up close and it's such a nice car. Like the inside, the detailing is amazing. Um, it's, it's really cool. Like the panel, it's like built into the, the fake wood. Um, and so it's very impressive and like, it looks like more of a luxury car, luxury car than I'm used to. So um, I got to test drive that. And then I think they brought me back to the dealership like the next day or maybe like a few days after that. But yeah, we really needed to go through the financials. I was like, okay, this is a nice enough car. Let me get more details. So Mm -hmm. um, I think I brought my mom back with me um, and she provided great advice um, while we were sitting with the dealer. Um, Mm -hmm. And so we sat down there. We were at the dealership for quite, quite a few hours um, just walking through all the numbers and uh, the first kind of, I guess, offer they gave me was like a definite no from me. Um, mm. I think it was like 289 a month and um, I had to have it for like three years and it was only like 10,000 miles huh. ev- every year. Um, okay. And I was like, you know, I really like the Kona. So I think I'm just going to tell them like, uh, I'll consider it. I'll have to like look at my budget. I was quoted like 250 or so um, Mm -hmm. when we did like the first test drive. So I think I'm just going to go home and think about it. Um, But then um, the dealer just went back and he was like, okay, one sec, let me see what I can do. And that's Mm -hmm. when he gave me such a, such a great offer. I really just could not turn it down. Um, So he offered me 256 a month. So that's pretty close to the 250. I was like, yeah, that's fine. Um, zero dollars down, twelve thousand miles a year, only for two years, and there's no first payment. And I think the first payment was around like eighteen hundred dollars, so I didn't have to pay any taxes or fees or the first payment. So it was a really great deal, and that's why I walked away with the Aria. Wow. Okay. So it, it really came down to the deal. And I know you said that you took your mom with you, love bringing support when making these financial decisions. And you said that she gave you some good advice. And I think that's one of the goals with hosting these conversations as well. It's like, hey, here's someone who actually did it. This was their experience. This is how the dealer was. Um, this is why they made that decision. But also to give advice because some people are like, don't lease. Some people are like, definitely lease. Was there advice that you got from your mom or that you've gathered from this experience that you would definitely put at the forefront of this conversation? Yeah, I would definitely recommend looking at the YouTube videos that talk about leasing versus buying because it makes so much sense to lease an EV right now, but it also really depends on your lifestyle. Like if you just can't go more or if you have to go more than like 15,000 miles a year, definitely like strongly consider if you want to lease. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the the best things, um, the most help that my mom provided was like very specific technical kind of details when talking to a dealership, mainly around like tires and um, all those kind of little like nitty gritty kind of details. She used to sell tires at Target Uh way back in the day when they used to do that. So she was going really into detail with that. And I think with her providing that expertise and then me and my expertise on EVs, that's what really helped me get a better deal on this car. So um, definitely look at YouTube videos um, that really help like walk through the pros and cons of like leasing and buying. Definitely. It's definitely up to what folks need and what they plan on doing with the car that they lease or buy. Um, And yeah, so it sounds like you were presented with an offer for like an almost $50,000 MSRP for an electric vehicle that has like a decent reputation. It's not the fastest, it's not the fastest charging, but you know, it, 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 it's not, it's really not that bad of an option. There's definitely uh, EVs that don't charge as well or that have different aspects, but this one fit for you. So it seems pretty clear that financing made sense for the leasing. Um, the Aria had enough like features. It was, you enjoyed the drive. You thought it would fit your lifestyle enough that 
you were open to leasing it and you decided to, did you feel like the dealer was pretty educated on electric vehicles? Or do you feel like Not you had the upper really. hand? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely had the upper hand on that. Um, he knew, he knew some stuff, but they couldn't really answer, uh, like specific numbers, like the kilowatt, like what's the, what's the capacity of the battery? How fast can it charge? Mm. Um, and so I definitely had the upper hand on that one. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I think that that's an aspect too, that we want to see more and more dealers understand these details that are important for electric vehicles that are not the same details that are important for ice internal combustion engines because you know you've got miles per gallon efficiency and then it's like okay well it's quite a different conversation when it comes to evs so it's it's cool to come with all that information but would love to see it more on the dealership side as well because there's tons of people that are coming in to lease or buy an ev and that's their first electric car that they're introducing into their lives so just the more information out there i think would be would be the better but part of your work as well is you know I mean, I guess, tell me a little bit about the work that you do with Drive Clean Colorado. Yeah, absolutely. So with Drive Clean Colorado, we're a nonprofit organization and we promote clean, equitable transportation. So we work with a variety of stakeholders, um, like schools, municipalities, state government, federal government, um, all kinds of stakeholders just to kind of accelerate the transition to electrified transportation, but also like other alternative fuels like compressed natural gas, renewable natural gas, biodiesel, ethanol, all that kind of stuff. But we are having like an increased focus on equitable transportation. So we work very closely with the state um, and Colorado has really cool um, like programs that make EVs more accessible. Um, without these programs, I definitely would not be owning an EV right now. Um, but yeah, with Drive Clean Colorado, uh, I just started working at the specific nonprofit um, in February, but I've been doing very similar stuff um, in this nonprofit industry for like three or so years. So um, yeah, we have a lot of contracts and it's a lot of cool unique projects working with like different municipalities or different organizations, um, just coming up with creative ideas to get people out of gasoline and diesel vehicles. Hmm. Interesting mission. And obviously you know a lot about what incentives exist in your state in Colorado. Can you tell me a little bit about those? I know that I think we want to have a whole podcast like outlining what Colorado is doing and then maybe compare that to other states because there are different, there's different regulation. You know, some states have stricter regulation on how many new cars sold have to be electric by a certain date. And then what kind of incentives are backing that up? There's lots of different organizations throughout different states that aren't even at the state government level, but that are like other organizations that are getting grants one way or another to help fund, you know, more electric cars on the road or electrified cars on the road, and especially for folks with lower income situations that want to take advantage of it as well. But yeah, can you paint a little picture of Colorado? You said like this would make a difference on whether or not you had an electric vehicle living in that state. Absolutely. So not only does the state provide incentives, but we also have programs that promote these incentives through like outreach and community engagement. So we have uh, the tax credit. Um, let me get the numbers on this one. Um, so you can get $5,000 off of an EV, and these are all up front. So $5,000 off of an EV if the uh, MSRP is under 80000 or if it's under 35000 which there's not that many EVs that are under 535000 mm-hmm. um, yeah. They That can um, get up to $7,500 off of the vehicle up front. Um, so then when you combine that with the federal incentive of $7,500, which applies to almost all of them, if you're leasing it, then you can stack that and get like $15,000 off. Um, but in addition to that, um, so there's the tax credit and there's also the vehicle exchange Colorado credit. So if you have a vehicle that is 12 years or older, or it doesn't pass emissions, which mine didn't do both. So it checks both those boxes. Um, you can get six thousand dollars off of an EV, or uh, if it's brand new, or four thousand dollars off of a used EV. 
So there's those two kind of state credits that you can use. Um, but there's also this really cool program that I think is unique only to Colorado. Um, it's called Recharge Colorado, and we have six recharge coaches throughout the state. So we help walk people through all of these incentives, and we also help people install charging stations. So um, officially, we help consumers, local governments, workplaces, and multi-unit housing developments identify monetary savings, grant opportunities, and other advantages related to deploying EVs and charging infrastructure. So I I just heard that um, like people are doing research saying if this existed anywhere else, but they couldn't find it. So I think Colorado is just kind of leading the way in not only like promoting these financially, but also just kind of being like a hand to hold and really help people understand what what's out there. Wow. Yeah. With, I mean, one that's crazy, the, um, like the amount of incentives that are available, can you stack those? Like, could you take it or are any exclusive or could you really just, if it, if I qualify, then I can have it. No. Yeah. You can totally stack all of them. And I didn't even go into like utility rebates and incentives. So depending on the utility, all of these incentives are stackable. So I think the number that they gave me of like me using all of the incentives that I could qualify for, I could have gotten like, I think $18,000 off upfront, but there's some weird stuff with, I think I mentioned it in the video and I'm still kind of confused about it, but those were too many incentives for me to get the lease. So they actually had to take like a few thousand dollars off of that in order for me to get a two year lease. Uh, I think that's what it was. So it's a little confusing, but it's funny that there's too many incentives for certain situations. And I'm sure some people feel one way about that. And some people feel another where like incentives are great, you know, let people take advantage of this. And then also should we be incentivizing this? You know, lots of different opinions, but either way, there's, I don't think anyone could really get that mad at a very inexpensive, you know, car that also you're leasing. So you're not necessarily investing in it for the rest of its life or the rest of your life. And then also, okay. So there's also cost savings. Like you're not having to replace things on your TSX anymore, or you know, have a flat mm-hmm. tire or be having nightmares about running through stoplights. There are some value <laughs> there, but um, what about charging are you do you have home charging do you mostly charge publicly how has that been i cannot charge at home um i don't even think there's really just a basic outlet for me at my townhouse so i i still think i'm in a pretty unique situation where i still have access to free charging all around me so there's new belgium brewing that's just down the street so i can easily just charge there for hours like drink some beer get some work done um, is that free the power- there? Yeah, that one's free. Um, nice. So there's there's other places that offer free charging too. I was just out of a library and that one was free. So some other ones I have to pay for. Um, but there's the Powerhouse campus um, where Kyle does a lot of videos um, and he's installing uh, DC fast charging stations as well. Um, so that charging is free. Um, there's free charging on CSU's campus after four o'clock you only need a permit to park there. And so you can just park there and like, there's no fee associated with charging. So um, like when I was in school, that would have come in handy. Um, Sometimes Mm -hmm. they'll still hang out there. Um, But then I also get free charging with EVgo for a year. And there's an EVgo charging station, like five minute walk from me. So I got really lucky with that one. Um, I think Fort Collins only has like three DC fast charging stations. And this one happens to be right next to me, but I can also charge for free at it. So there's a lot of options for me, even though I can't charge at home. And then whenever I drive anywhere around Colorado through Denver to Colorado Springs, where I usually go, there's charging stations all along there. And there's some EVgo stations. Um, unfortunately the only EV go in Colorado Springs is down and I actually got stuck at that station, but, um, there's, there's so much for me. And, um, if I ever move, I'm definitely going to have to figure out um, my other options. Interesting. Oh my gosh. You, uh, you just listed the longest list of free charging that I've ever heard. And I was going <laughs> to ask you about the EV go deal because that was, if you leased or bought a new 2023 Nissan Aria on or before April 30th of 2024, you were able to 
take advantage of that. And that was when I worked at EVGO, one of the programs uh, that I, that was one of my responsibilities. I didn't get it up and running, but once it was running, I was in charge of it. So yeah, it's great when people can take advantage of that free charging, right? But that's pretty crazy. Also relying on public charging is very different than I can also can't charge at home. I can charge at family members' homes, which is fine. You know, I'm not complaining at all, but Sometimes, yeah, if you're dealing on pub with public charging, you're dealing with the reliability of those chargers that is not up to you. So you got stuck at a charger. I, I want to talk about that, but also like, yeah, what trips have you taken with the Aria since you got it? When did exactly did you, did you get it? Um, I got it sometime in early April. So I just yeah. made that deadline. Yeah. I didn't know nice. they were ending that on April 30th. Yeah, I just um, looked that up earlier. Yeah, so what have yeah. you been doing? It, it hasn't been that long, I guess, like maybe two months, a, a little bit. So what? yeah, what have you been doing? Do you commute with it? Do you take it on trips into the mountains, being in Colorado, any longer road trips? Let me know. Yeah, so with my job, um, we work remotely with a lot of like traveling. So we can meet in person and just kind of work together at coffee shops. But we also have a lot of events. So I, I'm actually a recharge coach, as I mentioned uh, the program earlier. And with that role, I also have to organize ride and drive events. So with that one, um, we just had one in Sterling and Kyle actually made a video about it. And with that, I think it was about an hour to an hour and a half drive. And they have a fast charging station there, thankfully. Um, and thankfully it charged my car, but Kyle ran into some issues with his Audi so that one was kind of weird, but ChargePoint fixed it right away. Um, so I've been to Sterling. Um, I've been to Colorado Springs once with this. I've been to Denver a few times. I haven't done too much mountain driving aside from Estes. I've been to Estes once, and that was actually a few days ago. And there's absolutely no problems there. Estes has a really robust charging station plan, charging station infrastructure. Um, they have like four DC fast chargers, um, at least four. I can't remember all the numbers, but they have those. They have like a level two station at Town Hall. So if you're there for a while, then it just makes sense to charge there. But I didn't even need a charge when I was up there. So I was able to make it there and back pretty easily. No worries, no stress, no, no range anxiety at all. Um, nice. But yeah, I can tell you more about my trip to Colorado Springs. That one was a doozy. It was during a pretty big snowstorm that kind of came out of nowhere. It was just forecasted to rain, but for some reason we were getting just so, I don't know, like the snowflakes were, I'd say like quarter size, like it just came down fast and hard. Oh. And I had driven, I had driven all the way from Fort Collins to Colorado Springs. Yeah. And that's like 130 through. miles or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so I, when I got to my parents' house, uh, they don't have charging. Um, I didn't even like plug it into an outlet. I had enough where I was like, I'll just figure this out the next day. So I had an event I had to go to the next day. That's when it started snowing. And so mm -hmm. I'm at this event and I'm like, oh, I've got like 15% left. I should probably go find a charger. And I spent the next hour or two just finding a good enough charger. I first went to the EVGO station and that one had apparently been down for months. And oh. with the Aria, um, it apparently latches on to the, to the charging cord. And like, there's sometimes like, sometimes it gets stuck or you have to like type in a special sequence on the key fob. And so I got stuck there in the snowstorm with like less than 10% battery. And oh. I called them eventually got freed, but I then had to find just a, another charging station somewhere else. And so I bounced around to a few different ones and I used the, I think, I think I used plug share to find charging stations. And the first one I went to after that was on private property and it was behind a fence. And I don't think it listed that in plug share. So I drove all the way over there losing percentage just for me to not be able to charge there. Then I went to another one. I think it was only like six kilowatts of charging. So it sat there for a little bit. Um, but I had to have my mom come get me. Um, and so it sat there for a little. But then I was like, you know, I think it will only get like fully charged if I leave it there for like over a day. And I can't do that. So we had to find yet another charger. 
Um, and then I got lucky and I found a free charging station. It was a blank charging station too. And it was at like a new like hospital wing somewhere. And mm. I just like had it sit there for the whole night and I got enough charge to where it would take me all the way back to a DC fast charger station in Denver the next day. But it was, it was pretty rough, especially with the cold. It really did affect it. And mm. I guess that was just great exposure into the EV ownership lifestyle. Jeez Louise. Yeah. Did that make you want to like, what did that make you think? Like, Oh my God, what did I do? Yeah, I didn't like it sucked, but I'm still like, I still really like having an EV and I'm still going to only ever have an EV from here on out. But I had my mom and I had other friends in Colorado Springs where if anything really bad happened, like they could come help me out. I think, I think I have AAA and they probably do something with maybe charging your car enough to get you to the next charging station. Maybe they'd have to tow it, but I feel like I had enough options to kind of save me in the end that I wasn't too stressed about it, but it was extremely inconvenient. Yeah. Extremely inconvenient. And you're not the only one with that kind of story, unfortunately. And then it's like, okay, I will never not double, triple check that the charger that I'm going to is not behind a fence or is as fast as I want, or like, look at the reviews on plug share to see how recently someone charged and what were they driving and what did they get? It really makes you kind of uh, more and more of an investigator <laughs> so that you can, so that you don't run into that. But it is such a shame that that's a common experience in, in the U S for people is running into charging deserts. And I think it's getting less and less common, but this happened to you within the last few months. So you know, that, that does suck. It's an arguably mm -hmm. like a not very awesome situation. You still mm -hmm. are electric. It still doesn't deter you. And I think a lot of people who choose to go electric right now, um, I mean, some people I know uh, it doesn't work for them. And then they go back to driving like a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid or even an internal combustion engine. But some people are like, listen, it's all a part of the game. You know, I've got my experience. Sounds like your mom comes in handy in many places, mm -hmm. more places than one. And so in terms of I mean, that's, that's hopefully that never happens to you again, but what else do you think so far? Like while you're driving it around, does it have good like route planning? Um, what's, what about the comfort of the car? What are your favorite features so far? Yeah. Um, I haven't played around too much with route planning. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the software. Um, I think I used, um, like the voice controls. I just said, Hey, Nissan, find me the nearest charging station in Edgewater. And it, it pulled up a map, but it didn't list like all the most important, I guess, numbers that I'm looking for when it comes to charging stations. And it's just kind of hard. It's not very user friendly. Um, then that's just kind of for what I was using there, but I should probably play around with that a little more. Right now, I just use my phone and plug share to find all my charging stations. But um, for just daily like operation of the vehicle, it's it's just really nice. It's um, one thing I don't like about it is the regen, of course. But every time I get in it, there's three different things that I do in order to get the maximum amount of regen, and I have to do that every single time I get into the car. So there's the E step that I have to turn on. I have to put it into eco mode, and then I have to put it on B instead of D, which instead of drive. I don't even know what B stands for. Um, so I do all of those things every single time I get into it. And that's a little inconvenient to have to do that in addition to not getting the full region. So um, that's mm. one big consideration. But I knew I was getting into that uh, from the start. Um, the numbers yeah. were just so good, I couldn't turn it down. But uh, it's really nice. My friends like to drive it. It's just a great driving experience. Um, I think the braking is also just kind of weird because um, sometimes it's a little more sensitive. Sometimes it's a little more stiff. It just depends on when I start to break as it slows down. So I'm mm -hmm. still kind of playing around with that. Um, but yeah, overall, I, I just really like having it. Um, the screen, the display is really nice. Um, the controls are mostly pretty easy to use. Um, yeah, I really like the car. Oh, that's good to hear that you like it. I mean, even with all of its things that you have to learn. I know with the, with the VinFast, which is the one that I drive, which is also a lease. Um, there are things that I have to get in and reset every time. And I'm like, could you just 
remember what I told you last time. I promise it's still me and I still want it to be exactly like the settings that I set the last time I was in here under the same profile, but maybe they will change that in the future. Vin fast, please. Um, but yeah, those are some things that you, you learn about the car, especially if it was a deal or if it's your company car and you, and you make it work. One thing that I'm, I'm it, like, I can't believe it's still going on is that charger uh, or the car latching on to the connector. Um, you know, that is the, on the car side of things. And I know that that's been a problem for a while now. So would love to see that um, changed. Has that happened to you since? Um, it happened one other time since then. I was at a level two station. I think it was a NLX way station. And it, yeah, it just wasn't unlatching. And I had to like unlock it a bunch and unlock it and unlock it and then it finally came out um so i still don't know like why that happens like when it happens specifically but i've been able to escape every time at least so the first wow. one was just like really difficult and i had to call customer service but thankfully i haven't had too much of an issue with that since then did you call ev go or did you call nissan i called ev go yeah they had i had the app pulled up and everything so Nice. And they, they were they able to option. somehow get their the charger to communicate to your car so that the car would unlatch? I think they just had to walk me through the specific sequence to unlock. So yeah. I think that was more of an ARIA kind of thing, but they they knew enough about it. So Interesting. Um, I'm glad the call just kind of went right through. I don't remember having to like wait for options or anything. So nice. it was really nice. They got me out right away. I was really nervous that I'd have to just sit there pressing like one, two, three, whatever to yeah. just talk to a representative. Yeah. Uh, thankfully it went right through. Yeah. Some of my work, you know, was closely with the customer service team at that company and just how much, you know, how much they have to help people and they're some of the nicest people. So just also, I always love to remind people like they want to help you. So <laughs> I know it sucks to be in the situation you are, but they did not put you there. They're just customer service. And hopefully they are quick like that and can help you get out of that because that is really something that I think, um, yeah, the Arias need to not do anymore. So, so you've mentioned some things that you love, some things that you, you know, aren't your favorite, like you're, you know, figuring out the braking still wish it had region. Is there anything else that stands out or like would you recommend if someone found a lease like this or even a similar lease to for someone to lease the nissan aria exactly you have the engage plus e-force all-wheel drive would i recommend someone getting the same lease absolutely i feel like these numbers like i just i could not walk away from that and every time i talk to somebody about it too they're like whoa that's a really good deal so Absolutely. Like if you get all the numbers I listed, like you really should not walk away from that deal, especially if the MSRP is almost like $50,000. Yeah. And if you live in Colorado or a state with a bunch of incentives that you can hopefully take advantage of, sounds like, I mean, I would have a hard time even finding them all. There's a long list. So hopefully more resources yeah. like what y'all are doing, make them uh, more easily accessible so people can take advantage of them and not miss out on money on the table. Yeah, and I only talked about the incentives for consumers. Colorado has a lot of incentives for fleets as well, and they're Ooh. still developing it. They're adapting. They're putting more money towards it. It's it's so cool. So they, they have incentives for vehicles, for fleets to purchase vehicles, but also for installing charging stations. And there's so much more to it. I'm not a fleet expert. We have a fleet expert on the team, but Colorado really has a lot of incentives for everybody involved, not just consumers. Awesome. Yeah. We've got a, we have, I think we just, we're destined to do another podcast on all these incentives because of course, yeah, you make a good point. There's the individual consumer side of things and then the, the business, the private side of things and fleet electrification has e huge impact across the board from, you know, environmental impact to cost savings and also benefiting from, incentives that exist. And there's also regulation pushing for more and more percentages uh, of fleets to be electrified by a certain date. So more and more resources on that and more information. So I don't, I mean, I hope our audience agrees, but I would love to have Lacey and, or, you know, any of your colleagues on to talk about the incentives that exist and, and 
lay them out. I think because how could you, how could one person know them all? Not so sure, but we could at least cover it on a podcast. Um, yeah, I think I'll probably have to talk to the energy office to get one of their experts on the podcast because they they know so much about it, and I'm I'm just one of the people that does education and outreach. So I'll see if I can connect you with the experts. Thanks, Lacey. Yeah, and I'm really glad you're enjoying your aria you know at at the very least sounds like you do enjoy it and that you will not be going back so it'll be interesting to see at the end of your lease what you want to do next do you have any inklings on are you just still you i mean you just started this lease but that'd be future thinking but the only inkling i have is i'm not gonna get a car with this kind of regenerative braking again i mean even with a really good lease deal i think the braking is just weird. So this is a really good transition vehicle for people that are used to driving internal combustion engines. Mm-hmm. It does a helpful regen. It drives more normally, but that's not what I'm looking for at all. I'm really looking for just the sole EV experience. Nice. Yeah. Learn learn about what you want and make sure that you get it next time. Great. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe we'll have an update later. I mean, you've got this lease for a while. I'm leasing the VinFast as well, which is more... Um, yeah, like I think closer to the combustion norms in terms of, you know, it's not one pedal braking and it's not super heavy region either um, and all those other fun, quirky things that it has. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, Lacey, for coming onto the podcast and sharing your leasing story and also telling us more about Drive Clean Colorado and Colorado Incentives and honestly, this amazing deal that you got and all the free charging that you have all around you. I'm I'm very happy for you and others that can take <laughs> advantage of that. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me on the show and on the YouTube channel. I love Out of Spec. I love being a friend of Out of Spec as well. It was really nice to meet you officially, Francie. Hopefully we can see each other in person sometime. But thank you so much for having me today. Of course, of course. I'll be out in Colorado uh, next month so we can we can get together. Yeah. And awesome. I'll see you then. Yes, perfect. I'm sure our audience will have some thoughts about this as well. So let us know in the comments. Maybe we can get some answers from Lacey if they're specific to her experience. Have you leased? Are you going to lease? Are there any crazy offers? I know that they're out there on the market. So let us know what is interesting you most, what is maybe keeping you from doing it. Maybe you just don't even know all the incentives that are available for you in your state and your city. Let us know in the comments. Thank you again, Lacey. Thanks to everyone for plugging into the Out of Spec podcast. We'll see you next time on the next episode. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.